This video tutorial will be on the wet preservation of a calf specimen. This week old calf was generously donated by the neighbor of a good friend of mine who has a small cattle farm. The exact cause of death is uncertain although the harsh winter cold is implicated. This calf specimen which is approximately 30 inches in length and weighing a little over 7 kilograms can be classified as a large mammal and so will be employing a standard technique for large mammal wet preservation using formalin as the fixative and preservative. There are a handful of ways by which you can preserve a large mammal. You can obtain the skeleton, make a cool taxidermy, make a study skin mount or even make a wet specimen out of it. I've always wanted to add a large animal wet specimen to my collection, hence this video tutorial. The materials required for processing a large mammalian specimen are as follows. The specimen 10% or 8% formalin solution, either buffered or unbuffered. Check out my video on how to prepare buffered formalin by clicking on the link given in the screen or the link in the description below. A large container for fixing the specimen. A container or tank for final preservation and display of the specimen. 10 or 20 cc syringes with needles. Sharp blade or surgical scalpel. Gloves, goggles, and apron or lab coat, along with a formaldehyde respirator if you can get one. A large plastic sheet or any non-absorbent material for your workbench to collect accidental spills of formaldehyde and formalin. The steps that we'll be following in this calf preservation tutorial are rinsing, injection and or slitting, fixation, a second rinsing, final preservation and display, and labeling. I've made generalizations and deeper explanations in many parts of the preservation process so that this video tutorial may apply to just about any large mammalian specimen that you have and wish to preserve. In the first step, the specimen may be rinsed thoroughly with clean tap water and the body surface gently brushed to remove dirt and other superficial impurities. A second or even a third rinse may follow as required. When it comes to preserving larger specimens such as this, it is always a good idea to be on the safe side and perform both injection and slitting of the specimen. This dual action ensures a thorough fixation and preservation of especially the internal parts of the organism, which are in fact the most prone to putrefaction and rotting. Specimens are said to be properly fixed and preserved if the internal organs and parts do not show any signs of decay at any point during the course of fixation and preservation. Perform the injection and slitting step by laying the specimen onto a sheet of plastic or any other waterproof non-absorbent material so that the excess fixative liquid dripping off of the specimen will be collected on the sheet and can be poured back into a suitable container thus minimizing environmental spill. We start off by making deep slits of appropriate lengths at several points throughout the body using a sharp blade or surgical scalpel. Main areas of focus would be the major muscles of the limbs, the tail, neck, abdomen and also the gaps between the ribs. The length of the slits will depend on the size of the specimen. For this calf specimen, slit lengths of half an inch or so would be appropriate. I should admit at this point though that I made a bit too much slits which was overkill. Nevertheless, I must also point out that based on my past experiences, when it comes to preserving very large organisms, a bit of overdoing here and there is way better than underdoing. Dealing with putrefaction and decay in your precious specimens, no matter how slight, is not a very enjoyable experience.
Once we're done with making slits throughout the specimen, we proceed with the injection step. Using a 10 or 20 cc syringe with a hypodermic needle, draw 10% formalin solution to its full capacity and start injecting 2 to 5 ml each into all the parts mentioned previously in the slit making stage. In the abdomen and major muscles, 5 to 10 ml injections may be made. The 10% formalin used as fixative in this injection process and as preservative later in this video may or may not be buffered. However, keep in mind that one has to use the same type of formalin throughout the processing of a specimen. For example, if you use buffer type, use buffer type throughout the fixation and preservation steps. Same goes with the use of ordinary formalin. This is necessary because the abrupt changes in solute concentration which results from the use of one type of formalin at one point in the preservation process and the use of another type at another point in the specimen processing can cause shriveling or swelling and unnatural distortion of the specimen. As far as possible, it is highly recommended though that one use buffered formalin throughout specimen processing. To know more about the use or disuse of buffered formalin when dealing with various groups of organisms and also learn how to prepare buffered formalin, do check out my other video whose link is given in the screen right now or in the description below. The third step, also related to the second step, is the fixation of the specimen by immersing it in a container filled with the appropriate fixative agent, the same chemical that was used to inject the specimen. Fixation of the specimen is necessary in order to arrest any decomposition and disintegration at the cellular level and thereby help maintain the structural integrity of the specimen. Fixation step also permanently hardens the specimen to the posture that it's kept in. So at this point, it is absolutely necessary that the specimen be arranged and spread out in the way that you want it to be displayed in the preservative liquid, because only very minimal changes can be made to the specimen's posture after this step. You may use various tools to spread out the specimen, such as pins, threads and hooks, if need be. This calf specimen was already in the posture that I wanted it to be, so there was no need of rearranging it. To fix the specimen, all we have to do is to immerse the specimen into a large container filled with the fixative solution, in this case a 10% formalin, either buffered or unbuffered, of the same nature and type that you use to inject the animal with. The specimen should spaciously fit into the container without any cramping and congestion. It should also completely immerse in the fixative fluid, so make sure to use a liberal quantity of the solution. As we immerse the calf specimen into the fixative solution, one can see a good quantity of air bubbles coming out through the slits that were made especially in the rib cage. This is a good sign because we can be sure now that the cavities inside the specimen are thoroughly filled with formalin solution which will ensure a proper fixation in and out. Cover the container tight and allow the fixative to work its way throughout the specimen for a couple of weeks for a large specimen such as this. Make sure to monitor the specimen every few days to see the progress in fixation. Carefully check for signs of putrefaction, especially in the abdomen area, by gently poking it with the blunt end of a stick or metal rod. If any area of the body happens to be still soft or looks bloated, immediately make additional slits in that region and also inject a good quantity of the fixative into it. Add more formal into the container if necessary. If the specimen floats, Wear gloves and apply firm pressure in the body to allow any air within the body cavities to escape. In the case of this specimen, fixation step progressed really well and there were no signs of putrefaction that could be seen even by the end of two weeks. Once a specimen had been fixed, the waste fixative solution can be stored in containers for future fixation of other specimens. 
In this step, we remove the specimen from the fixative and give it a brief rinse in clean tap water. Although this step is optional, it is always a good idea to rinse off the fixative from the specimen before final preservation and display, because by now the fixative solution is in most cases dirty and colored with bodily exudates and excretions from the specimen. So for reasons that lean more towards visual aesthetics in the final display, rinsing step is highly recommended. This brief rinsing step may be followed if you're gonna use formalin as the final storage preservative. In case you're planning on using an alcohol such as ethanol or isopropanol as preservative, you'll have to soak the specimen for at least 24 hours in fresh, clear water, preferably slow running tap water, to remove as much of the formalin fixative from the specimen as possible. At the end of this 24 hour washing, soak the specimen for an additional one hour or so in fresh water to remove almost all, if not all, traces of formalin. After a brief rinsing of the specimen to get rid of a majority of the dirty formalin fixative, it's time now to house the specimen in its final storage container with fresh preservative liquid. Do have a look at my other short video tutorial on what containers to be or not to be used for wet specimens by clicking on the link in the screen or in the description below. Aquarium tanks are my personal favorite containers for wet specimens, and so in the meantime while the calf was soaking in the fixative, I had my young and talented brother-in-law make a tank from glass sheets and silicone that's a perfect fit for this calf specimen. With the aquarium tank ready, we fill about half the tank with the preservative liquid. You may use 10% or 8% formalin solution at this point for the final preservation. And again, a reminder to use the same type of formalin, either buffered or unbuffered, throughout the processing of the specimen. In case you're preserving the specimen in alcohol, first transfer the specimen into 50% ethanol or isopropanol after the 24-hour washing period mentioned in the previous step. Leave the specimen in 50% alcohol for a couple of hours and then transfer it into 70% alcohol. Allow the specimen to soak in 70% for a couple of more hours and then finally store the specimen in 75% or 80% alcohol. Coming back to the formalin preservation, we now gently lower the fixed and rinsed calf specimen into the tank. Once the specimen is in place, we top up the tank with formalin to about 2 inches below the brim of the tank or until the specimen is completely submerged to at least a couple of inches below the liquid level. This calf specimen was large and heavy enough to completely sink under its own weight and since the container was custom made to a perfect fit, it did not require any tools and materials to suspend or mount the specimen within the container. However, one does not always enjoy this sort of convenience with every type of specimen. For more details on the various mounting techniques for final display of specimen, along with some tips and tricks based on personal experience, make sure to click on the link in the screen or in the description below. Gentle but firm pressure may be applied repeatedly to the specimen to allow the preservative to seep into the slits made previously all over the specimen. When the preservative fluid is poured into the tank, Numerous tiny air bubbles may be formed on the specimen surface, which may be removed by gently probing the surface of the specimen with a glass or plastic or stainless steel rod, as seen here. Another way of removing such air bubbles is by gently tapping the specimen against the bottom of the container, as can be seen in this video. Now all that's left is to cover the tank with its lid and seal it. Temporary sealing that I've found to be quite effective and will last a couple of years minimum can be accomplished by taping the lid onto the container using a good quality, preferably transparent cellophane tape. This is a quick and convenient way of sealing, especially if the need to remove the specimen for whatever reasons will arise at some point in future.
permanent sealing can be accomplished using silicone sealant as can be seen in this photo. You can also chip off a small piece from one of the four corners of the lid before sealing the lid like you see in this photo. Once you have sealed the lid, pluck this tiny hole with a ball of cotton. This will serve two purposes. One is to act as a port for draining or refilling of the preservative liquid. It will also help stabilize internal air pressure, especially in the hot seasons. Final preservation is complete in this way. Unless they are intended for scientific use and research, labeling of preserved specimens isn't an absolute necessity. Having said that, attaching labels containing even minimal but crucial data to specimen jars will go a long way in adding value to your specimens, even if you are just a hobbyist or an artist. This small good practice can even make you a potential citizen scientist. I personally make it a point to attach appropriate labels to my specimens with the fervent hope that my hobby collections will someday be of benefit to science even if it's in the slightest bit. A label doesn't have to be fancy. Data on name, date, place and collector's name are minimal and good enough requirements for a label. This for instance is a label format I've been adopting for my wet specimen collection till date. Paste or tie the label on the container and your preserved specimen is complete through and through. If possible, try to use archival acid-free paper and pigment-based inks for your labels. This ensures that the label containing the vital pieces of information stay for a very long time without fading or crumbling. For more details on Wet Specimen 101, do check out my video whose link is given in the screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.